Hey, 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 what is happening? Welcome to the live stream. Hold on a second. Why am I so big? And why is that video? There we go. Let me switch that around. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the live stream of consciousness. Yes, it's a little bit different right now. It's just me. Uh, Jesse's getting on. He's setting up, but he had some uh, some dental surgery today. So he was passed out and he totally wasn't able to wake up for the show. So I called him and he's he's going to come on and say hello. Uh, and we will see him, but uh, welcome everybody. Welcome all of you uh, regular viewers, Taylor and Courtney and Angela and uh, everybody out there in consciousness land. Um, we here at the live stream of consciousness, we talk about uh, the universal laws. We talk about the idea of living uh, intentionally um, and and anything that has to do with spirituality and consciousness. We love to talk about it. Uh, we love to bring some people on. What's up, Stevie Sage? I see you out there. Um, I'm just waiting for Jesse to come on to say hello. Um, and today is going to be an interesting show because we have a guest on today that actually uh, is somebody who neither Jesse or I know previously. Um, usually it's it's like a friend of ours or or something. Let me turn this off here for a second. I'll explain what that was. Uh, it's usually somebody we know who, uh, you know, we're familiar with their spiritual journey or transformation, and we bring them on and we talk to them. But today we have a guest who neither Jesse or I know was re actually recommended to us by our guest two weeks ago, uh, Sunshine. Uh, and I don't know if you guys remember Sunshine, but after our show, she said, oh, that was so much fun, and I have somebody who would be great for the show, and introduced me to our guest who we're going to speak to today, and I see Jesse has showed up, so let me bring Jesse on. I'll continue my story, and then we'll talk to, to our guest, and uh, welcome, my friend. Oh. Hello, my friends. As you can see, I'm a bit uh, slow, oh. and uh, I'm on a bunch of pain meds right now, and uh, I was bleeding a little bit more than you're supposed to bleed, so I ended up having to go back to the doctor and just get it looked at. But uh, I'm good, and I'm doing all good, and plan stands. You're going to lead the show, but I'm here in support of the live stream of consciousness. And I'm so sorry that I, I forgot. Uh, yeah, I, I really I was kind of took a nap a little bit, and I woke up, but I just kind of like forgot what day it was, forgot what my name What is my name? <laughs> you're a Toys R Us kid, man. That's right. That's what it is. <laughs> So, Michelson, I love you, and uh, see see how much I care. I'm I'm here. With, with I can't support. tell you how grateful I am for even just showing your face, um, and and making the effort to be here. I really appreciate it. I know I know our fans do. Taylor, I hope your surgery went well. Courtney, hey, and so. the one thing I want to say, um, and this will be the main little bit of what I say today, is just uh, uh, I was injured, and uh, I stopped going to the gym for a little while. Because um, because I, I had so many injuries that I was dealing with, and I was trying to be more sensitive to my body and what I needed to do for myself. Right. And um, that sensitivity was making crazy activity a little hard for me. But just recently, and despite appearances, I've been going to the gym again. And I've been so happy. So happy. That's great. Just from the awesome. improvements that are created. You know, and... And I, with my more spiritual ideology, uh, you know, so much of the way we go to the gym, it's very superficial. You know, we're like imagining that, you know, we've got to do a lot of weight. We've got to be macho, you know, all this stuff. And I've been trying to just take it easy and do just consistent activity. Exercise, yeah. And I already just working out this much am having nice results, um, like physical results. But yeah, man. Also and more importantly, happy, the endorphins of being active. And you mix going to the gym. You know, the first day I did it, I was just at the gym. I was glad to be there. I got some endorphins. But the second day, I had my headphones on, and I was listening to some of my favorite music. And I had such a wonderful time. That's awesome. And, you know, I know that everybody out there, you know, we could all use to feel a little happier and have a little bit more pep in our step. A little healthier, yeah, I think we put too much into, you know, what we're going to do and, you know, we, you know, we got to make a big plan or have something. You know, I, I didn't really have a big plan. My girlfriend, Julie, was going and she's like, you want to go to the gym? I'll be going. And I said, OK, so I'll go with you. You know what? I'm not going to sit here. I'll, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm so glad that I did. And Good it's just you, proving to me how easy it is to just, you know, put a little bit of effort in that direction and the massive amounts of benefits that you get from just sure. showing up, using your body and reminding yourself that, uh, you know, you're not a lump. You know, you, you yeah. got legs and you got arms. And you, well, got you, may, you may think this is funny for me to say right now, considering the way you probably feel and look, but you look great. You, I can tell you that you're happy. I can see it. You, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're looking vibrant. And, you know, I was actually going to ask you, you know, how is your no caffeine, no smoking? How's everything going? Are you, are you still like, awesome, man. That's great. So you, you I can see that you're, you're clearer, you know, you're, you're more focused. I'm, I'm more, more sleepy just because uh, from the, you know, you're the in pain, pain you're uncomfortable. I see that too. <laughs> I totally but, see that. But I'm really good, and, and and I really just like words of encouragement to to those out there. You know, we make it too big of a deal. We make a mountain out of a molehill. If you got a gym or you got a park nearby, or you know, like put on some music that you enjoy, and go listen to music and be a little active. I mean, just a little bit each day. And yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I did a couple of days and I felt so sore and whatever else, but my girlfriend was going to the gym again. And I was like, no, I'll go with you. And I went to the gym and, and just at the beginning, I thought I was just going to do some yoga and stuff. And I just started stretching and moving. And I was listening to the music. And before I knew it, I was like, you know, I feel great. I feel great. I'm going to work out a little bit more. I'm going to do a little bit more exercising. And I realized that, you know, we get hurt and we're feeling sore or whatever. And then we're like, oh, we crawl into a little ball of like our weakness. And in that moment, I saw like the only thing that's, that's between me and being powerful is like a little bit of soreness. And, you know, you, you push through that and you remind yourself, no, nope, I'm still powerful. Yeah. And it, it's, it's really, it's been wonderful. So, you know, so many people out there, you know, more than you need the live stream of consciousness, you need a little exercise and activity in your lives, especially right now with COVID. Equally, and only equally not more than just equally. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's in your power to remind yourself, how powerful you are. Yeah, that's right. Steve Sage said the endorphins. The endorphins, it's just absolute, you know, just absolutely, man. It doesn't take that much to um, to turn them on and yeah. feel good. And I've been feeling so great, despite the fact that I had to go get my wisdom teeth. But I feel great about that, too. I just had a little bit of uh, a lot of blood kind of coming out of my mouth earlier today. So, so. Do, you feel, do, you feel, do you feel more wise or less wise? Wiser than ever, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> awesome um well it's it's good to see you like i said i really appreciate it i i do think that so if, if you no no that's cool and 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 you know i want to let you go and rest if you want but i do know uh that our guest was uh excited to meet you so i would love you to stay oh, on yeah. and say hello hang out and enjoy the live stream oh, oh okay sweet awesome but i'm gonna try, I'm gonna I'm try gonna, to i'll talk yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. But, but this was you know i really feel I've been feeling that, and I wanted to share that with everybody. Awesome. But I'm going to try to keep my mouth shut from here out. No, you look you look great, man, and it's 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 good to hear. And uh, I just want to go back to what I was talking about before you came on about uh, our guest, our guest whose name is Michael Hathaway. He is an author, uh, but he was recommended uh, to us by our guest two weeks ago, uh, Sunshine Okubo, uh, the painter. And I just before I bring on Michael, I just wanted to talk about that experience because that's been great i mean sunshine was somebody who uh, you know i told the story how i had been in contact with on social media and i saw that she was on a, another podcast and she was excited so i invited her down and we just created this connection that is amazing and i'm imagining she kind of created the same connection with michael hathaway um and like the connection we have you know when you connect with other humans you know, and you're vibrating on that same frequency, it's really important. You, you're you creating ripples. And so I think that's what we did a little bit. So while Sunshine, if anybody follows me on Facebook, they saw this, but while Sunshine was waiting uh, to be on the show that day, she was nervous and thinking about it. She didn't know what to do. So she started a painting and that painting ended up to be a portrait of me. She said, after I painted it, I realized I was painting you and the vibration of connection with the conscious the ultimate consciousness and oh, cool. I, had to, I had to have it and so i went and i saw her and uh she gave me the painting it's she amazing. sees what i see yeah oh thank you brother amazing I, 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 we're, gonna have more of that. we're gonna have more suggestions of people that you and i haven't uh we don't personally know yeah. uh, julie a couple recommendations for me awesome. 
welcome some new people who are going to be coming on because, um, you know, we, we started off with our good friends and now a lot of our friends are recommending people. So we yeah. have so, people coming our so way. I took, I took a little mi- look at, at Michael's website. Um, you know, I wanted to see what he was all about and, you know, did he have a, a, a story of transformation that I could, I could see because, you know, you and I can see that stuff pretty easily. And I, I put on uh, one of his recordings. He does some audio podcasts um, and, uh, and he's an author. So his, his podcast style was, I felt like I was listening to like Walt Whitman, like somebody, you know, he was talking about his, his uh, hike out in the woods and, and just how he connected with nature. And it was just so eloquent and like really resonant you know, uh, it was like anybody can relate to it. It was really amazing. Um, so I said, yeah, I want to bring you on, Mike. And, and I messaged him and he said he would come on. So without further ado, that's all. I can't do a fancy introduction because I don't know him, but that's what I know. And let's find out more. So welcome to Michael Hathaway. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> um, You're welcome. Kid, so that I was a question for you, kid, first, okay? What's your favorite smell? Who are you asking that to? I love yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. Toys R Us. Toys R Us, kid. Oh, this one. Yes. Vanilla, which is the orchid. I can, really you, like the orchid. can you imagine that smell? Yes. Okay, so for a moment, just pause. Think of something you're grateful for. Breathe up from the ground and down from the sky and let it just beat in your heart for a moment. As you breathe that, just let yourself float up above and feel the energies of your body beginning to bring the healing to your mouth and all the things in the favorite color. And just take that in and knowing that at any time you want, you can take a breath of that vanilla and just feel love and feel gratitude. And knowing that what you're doing is you're just setting steps piece by piece with the exercise of actually allowing yourself to set one goal and the next goal, because when you forget to breathe, your body screams for oxygen and you get wound up and you think fast. So this will help you slow down a little bit to set the opportunity for that. Okay, you can think of that. There, that was that. So I got that over with. <laughs> that was awesome. Mike, that was awesome because I just got a whiff of vanilla. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with NLP? Um, a little bit. Why don't you tell us what it is? Well, neurolinguistic programming. It's a concept of mind language. And it's, in a way, the cutting edge new form of communication, if you want to call it hypnosis. And hypnosis is essentially, we live in trances all the time, whether it's positive trance or negative trance. And so if we could caught up in the trance, then we're stuck in what it is that is going on around us. If we step back away from it so we can see it from a different view, like the smell of vanilla, then we have a chance to assess it to get a different view of it. So in neurolinguistics, your minds, both of you, there's no one has a mind exactly the same. I call it mental DNA. So. First of all, I am learning from both of you. You're teaching me a lot of things just by observing and knowing. And when that way, then we can communicate on a level that fits how you're comfortable, rather than me telling you some belonging that you're looking at me, what, what, what's that mean? Because if you can put it into your language, then it makes sense. And of course, when you're working with many people, it's finding how you can put that language together. So when I do a little podcast, which lasts about a minute and a half to two minutes, it's nature and spirituality. It's called Message from the Mountain. And we have about a little over 160 acres in the foothills of the White Mountains. And so we have hiking trails. We have all kinds of things for people to come and experience. And right now, it's incredible. And so that talking about nature and NLP, what it does is, you can talk about nature, but while I'm talking about nature, you're actually thinking of something in your own life that compares to it without me telling you that. Where if I told you you had something or you did this, then your natural resistance kicks in. So this way you're, you're creating it almost in a subliminal way that lets you take things in. I'm going to be quiet. 
okay because I talk too much sometimes. No, that might no, be great. great. Can I, I? I have to say something because you're so so inspiring. Um, uh, you know, I've talked about this a lot before because one of the great things about Michael Zinn is he's really great about holding space for people. You know, and mm -hmm. I was speaking with um, a new group of musicians who I'm working with, and basically I keep trying to explain to them how you have to create a space for people to come and feel comfortable and, and be able to relax. You know, when you're putting on a performance, so much of the music scene, it's it's not it doesn't work anymore because the space that's being held is not good. It, it's not so what do you play? I, I play my vocal cords. You see, you're a singer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you perform Michael? Um I play the bass, yes. Well I I taught music for 30 years. And 25 years into it, I got run over going across the, going to summer school. And so that gave me a whole different perspective of life, going into trance in the middle of the street, not knowing where to live or not, but then knowing there's a purpose for it. And the adventure, that's the tipping, what we call tipping points. When you have an event in your life which rearranges your thinking, then you, you, then you see things different. And the whole world is doing that right now. They're all going through a tipping point with the pandemic and everything. And people are beginning to follow their heart. And they're changing jobs. They're doing all this stuff. And a lot of people are mad because they don't know what it is. But anyways, in, in music, it's the spaces in between that makes the difference. It's what you don't play rather than what you play. Right. Absolutely. Yes. No, I, I demonstrated how to set a space and how to create a space and to help people to go internally to change up the sort of talking to somebody to speaking with them, you know with them you know communicating directly within thank you for doing that and i was teed up on this because i was asked just the other day what my favorite scent was and i had somebody telling me about how reminding me i should say how vanilla was made from the orchid plant and so it's been on my mind when you said that yeah. immediately i was like oh vanilla that's my favorite and you see that's means that's a verification to me that I'm sort of tuned into your sources because when people say it's funny you should say that then it's yeah. uh, so and that's what I believe is this power because totally totally I'll, I'll tell you I spent most of my life trying to figure my mind out because right. I'm almost senseless in other <laughs> words as as a out of five senses I don't remember in my mind in four and a half of them hmm. I am non-visual Right. So I don't have any pictures. I also, uh, as a musician, I don't hear in my head, so I don't play by ear because I don't hear it. Hmm. So I play by feel. And so okay. the, yeah. who I'm playing with or the energy of the people there. And so my goal is to set it up so I become a channel for the source in playing and speaking or anything I do. Perfect. It's my intention that I'm connected to something beyond myself. I call it my second head. That is so a very that, powerful way to learn, too. Yeah, yeah. And that actually, it's a yeah. great segue to um, our question, right? So this is the live stream of consciousness. Um, you know, you just heard about it and kind of are jumping into it. And I love your presence and your energy here. But, um, oh, shit, I just lost what I was going to say. Michael, come on, you're leading the ship. Come on. I know, and then I, I I clicked on the button for all the all of the chat. Um, oh, the, I was going to get to our question. Um, you know, it started with uh, with Jesse uh, doing a spiritual class, and I was just basically broadcasting his class for him. And then when he was done, he's like, "This is great. We're pe people are responding. We're using social media for a good purpose here. Why don't we?" continue this and that's how the show is born and what we like to do is since all of our guests are amazing examples of some sort of spiritual transformation or some sort of awareness we like to ask them the basic question what is consciousness in your perception well consciousness trends into itself and remember i never know what i'm going to say until i say it necessarily so but Consciousness is beyond almost our own consideration because we're connected to something way beyond the earth and out in the cosmos. And so that core out there, all knowledge is there. And in my mind, when we go through the cycle of our souls traveling, 
each revolution, each reincarnation is actually an experience that goes with it. So eventually we come back to the balance. But that source is there, the consciousness is there. And so if we set our intention to live with, and I call it love, unconditional love, mm -hmm. so that if we tune into that, then our actions are there. We can be as excited or energetic about it or whatever, but it's a whole sense of just, and it comes back to what? Believing in something. Mm -hmm. And so the new energy biology, they call it, so to speak, is that sense of the quantum physics that comes back to the point of the connections, the way things work. And if you're into Edgar Casey at all, mm -hmm. Casey had a couple of amazing things uh, mm -hmm. that he said. One was uh, thoughts are either miracles or crimes. Mm -hmm. In other words, the minute we have a thought, we've created an energy. The minute that energy goes out, it attracts back to us what we're thinking about, whether we want it or not. Mm -hmm. It's like we can live in love or we can live in fear. And exactly. so my choice is the love end of it. And I spend a lot of time talking to a lot of people that live in fear. And and, but and it's, it's, it's interesting, and I agree with you, I think, that as part of this tribe of people who kind of have these conversations, you know, uh, it, it's kind of easy for us to look at other people and see them kind of struggling. Um, and, and again, it's almost as if they've chosen fear. And it's like, for somebody like you or I or Jesse, you're just like, why would you do that? <laughs> you know, because it serves them a purpose, right? Of you course. See, if, if somebody fails, they get comfortable with failure. They don't want to fail, but they know how to fail. Mm -hmm. So if they know how to fail, once they start to succeed, they don't know what to do with success. Mm -hmm. So what I call a comfort zone is you give yourself permission to take the risk of pushing yourself a little further out, mm -hmm. knowing you come back and fail. But if you get a little further out, then your comfort zone begins to expand. And then again, if you are holding it yourself, then it's a weight. They had a commercial on TV several years ago of a, of a Atlas holding up the world. He was about ready to drop it when he drives a truck and he puts the world in the back of the truck and then he gets in front and rides off. And there are an awful lot of will like us out there that have taken on so much more than than they need to hold. It's the mm -hmm. intention. And I believe each one of us has a whole team that goes with us. So mm -hmm. and, and people that have the gift of sight have told me after my accident without knowing each other, they go, what's behind you? And I'm going, I don't know. They said, well, something about 15 feet tall. And I go, well, I'm a big guy. But then I've heard people tell me it's not a guy. It's off work. Well, I don't know. But, you know, if you believe there's something there, that makes quite a bit of difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I feel I, compelled I, to share this. Well, sorry. Uh, I, I, I feel compelled to, to add to this. Um, and then I'm going to let Michael ask you, our other question, which will, well, I'm sure you'll have a nice long answer for us, and we look forward to doing it. But it's been it's been very interesting to me. A another level of this sort of fear consciousness that I see happens with a lot of people who are conscious, because we're sensitive. You know, everybody's sensitive, but those who open themselves up first tend to notice various things a little before the others, and. What happens a little bit is the sensitive kind of sweet people who are trying to avoid this fear consciousness, we end up amending our behavior and who we are based on the way the fear consciousness all around us is behaving and reacting. So instead of going, oh, I don't want to be a part of this fear consciousness, I'm just going to be me and I'm going to find my happy place and I'm going to do me. We start trying to be a version of ourselves that will cater to the fear minded around us. And then we do ourselves a terrible disservice and invariably we get wrapped up in kind of being a little upset with the people who are keying into the fear minded consciousness because we know on some level that's wrong, but we do the wrong thing. We, we start sort of quietly fighting them instead of mm -hmm. just disconnecting from the fear consciousness and being happy. Mm -hmm. do, you ever, do you ever read the book, The Gift of Fear? No. It was, not. By, it was written by uh, Gavin DeBecker, who was very big into law enforcement, and the book was actually based on uh, uh, a lot for law enforcement. 
And the, the one sentence in that book that really stuck out of my mind is, if you live in fear, it becomes part of your family. <laughs> and so, and I've got a little thing that I say to myself when this is all going, I says, what is my role in this? Mm -hmm. In other words, if I can get above it and say, well, what's my role? Realizing each person's on their own path, as much as we want to help them, as much as we pour, put our heart and soul into it. And particularly there with uh, Toys R Us, if you're, because he's so conscientious, people have taken advantage of you for your whole life. So you get to pick up, you become the human garbage collector. And then you've got plugging it around and uh, it makes it harder to... The know. garbage collector, that is such a... Oh man, I've been a garbage collector most of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and the question you're asking yourself, I want to point out to the audience because it's, it's so key. You know, Michael isn't thinking, how can I help? He says, what's my role in this? Because your role is not always to help the way we think of as help. Sometimes your role is to listen. Sometimes your role is to vibrate in a free way that quietly teaches everybody around you to be free as well. Your role isn't always to actively get in there and do anything. It's it's often a more subtle, subtle sort of behavior or just living being. And right. to ask yourself, exactly. what's my role? That prevents you from blocking yourself from the right answer. Right. Because if you right. ask your intuition, what's my role in this, and your role isn't actually to do anything physical, you won't get the right answer. And you'll end up making up something because your intuition can't connect to that question. Uh, and you know what? I was actually I was actually going to say something and I realized it's not even right. It's like, okay, so Jesse, how can we how can we make everybody realize that? And I, I said to myself, that's not our role. <laughs> that's, that's but our you have you both are lights. Right. So you can present the opportunity if someone chooses to gather some information that you're exactly. passing out. I usually tell people, look, you don't have to believe anything I'm saying. You can tell me I'm full of baloney. And so already I've given them permission. They don't have to believe what I'm saying. Once you've told them that, they're going to listen more than they would if they say, well, you got to hear this. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Michael, um, first of all, I'm just going to, I'm going to back up. Yes. Thank you so much. Your, your wisdom is, um, it's like pouring out and it's amazing. Um, I just want to talk about some of the chat that's happening. I also want to put up your website here. Um, ba boom. There we go. Michaelhathaway.com. Um, if you guys want earlier, I was talking about listening to Michael's recordings, uh, and he mentioned it. Messages, message from the mountain. Message, message from the mountain. I'm, it's yeah, either on Facebook or it's on uh, michaelathaway.com. On your website, yeah, yeah. I, I saw uh, White it. Mountain Reflections. Right. So, so that's where Michael lives, and he goes hiking and writes down yeah. his reflections. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to go to some of the comments. A lot of people were saying hello to you, Michael, and welcoming you, and uh, mm -hmm. thanking you for. I think a few people smelled vanilla. I, I saw some people thanking you. Um, yes, Steve says that's truly amazing. Uh, Courtney was talking about Sunshine's painting, uh, beautiful painting. Uh, Taylor says hello. Ninja says hello. Um, <laughs> your, your guest is giving us a country wizard vibe. I'm sure you get that a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm the guy up in the woods. <laughs> the guy in the woods, exactly. And actually, Sunshine is is here too, and she says she painted you as a wizard, which is great. Those soul paintings are amazing. It just really, it just shows who you are. Whether it's something specific like a wizard or something just abstract like mine, which is just a light in the universe. Um, I gotta give Michael a great compliment. Um, I've dealt with a lot of. Um, a lot of actors, especially older actors, um, interviewing them at comic conventions and things like that. And there are a lot of these guys who are very interested in holding the space. And they hold space in such an aggressive way. It's really off-putting a lot of times, especially when you're with somebody like me, who like, you know, when I interview somebody, I try to find out as much as I can and I try to feed them love so that they can you know send it back to the audience and every now and then i would run up against these guys and they just didn't like that i had a lot of energy because it was eating into the energy they wanted to control 
and they would literally like wrestle me for the, the microphone on some level and the audience just gets so mad at them because usually I would spend the whole day building the floor with an audience and you know they liked me so they didn't they didn't want to see me get like whacked in the nose by some actor like they, they were already on my son but Michael has shifted this space into a perfect space for himself and a space that we are enjoying the hell out of and transforming our show in a nice, subtle, and casual way where it was our choice to do so. And that is the way you do it. That is the way you take the microphone and you hold some space and you create an environment that you will feel more comfortable working in. And I just I applaud you on every level. I adore you, Michael. I know I just met you, but I love you. And thank you for being here. I always want to know when I'm you know, see a client or whatever. I want to know what they do well. You know, it's my first thing is, what do you do well? And lots of times they don't know what they do well because they think everybody does it the same. But if we have a strength, if we find something that we can use and that works in one area, we can apply it in another area. Absolutely. We can modify it around. So, it's, yeah, it's... Uh, well, I think I think that's just the way for me. Every time something amazing happens, I say, oh, wow, this happened because this happened before it and then went to this and then went to this. And, you know, it all it's everything happens for a reason. So so I know I, I looked you up a little bit. I saw you. Uh, you're an author of a few books. Um, so one of our guests is asking a question. I don't remember the names of all of your books, uh, but uh, Angela is asking, did you write Mystery at the Dream House? Yes, I did. You did. Look at that. Wow. So we Thank have somebody who actually knows your work, which is awesome. Well, and that's a fascinating story where paranormal meets reality, uh, where I went and used hypnosis and took a woman into her childhood and found that her best friend was a ghost. And then we went back and traced the history of the ghost through her uh, from the 1815. She lived in England. And it turns out probably the woman was the little ghost girl's mother in a past life. Because wow. a couple of things happened. First of all, the night we found out how the little girl died, the woman woke her husband up singing in French, a, a French dirge to the mayor. She doesn't speak French. Right. So just, you know, so. Out of nowhere, right. And, and so these unsolvable mysteries are just so exciting. That's awesome. So so I'm, a, I'm gathering from that that. Your hypnosis involves past life regression. I'm a, I am did the Idiot's Guide to Past Life Regression, which they did a second edition to. I, right. Well, that's those your books were. Past lives, yeah. That's awesome. So so tell us more about that. Tell, tell us another interesting story or tell us how you got into it. Uh, well, I got, I got into hypnosis. Basically, I was interested in the paranormal. And uh, then... Uh, I got hired as a musician to play for a stage hypnotist. And that's about as close to ever being hypnotized myself was talking to him beforehand, the rooms that I go around a little bit. And so I'm going, oh, okay. Well, it was a psychiatrist, psych, uh, psychologist at school. We used to hang out in a crazy music department who was trained in hypnosis. So he loaned me his books from college. And this guy's uh, name was Dr. Don Silva. Well, his son used to, who lived up in Madison at the time, used to practice calling baseball games up here. He eventually went on to become the announcer for the Boston Red Sox, if anybody knows that for oh, some wow. years. Donicello, he's out west someplace now, but his dad got me started in hypnosis. So, wow. Yeah, it, uh, and the passion. I mean, I've just, uh, it's amazing. I belong to the National Guild and actually do a past life uh, day course and I've uh, uh, been doing that for the last couple of years uh, after the convention so. Very cool. I'm super fascinated by uh, past life regression. Um, uh, one of my friends, I don't know if you know, uh, I know you're not from, you're from uh, New Hampshire? Yeah. yeah. Um, so here on Long Island, there's a guy named Steve Interante. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, we've had him on the show actually. And he does some past life regressions and he's doing some interesting things. He's um, taking two people at once and regressing them and having them actually meet 
in wherever it is, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever oh, dimension the they're going to, yeah. and communicate with each other and, and recognize, recognize each other. There's a, there have been some books, there's a place in California, I can't think of the name of it, where the, the, the hypnotist found that uh, in the local area, found like 30 different people in town that all lived a past life together. And she went back and did all the research on it. Amazing. And, uh, so, yeah, I, I believe we're affected by it all the time. Likes, dislikes, fears, whatever it is that we can't explain. I want to know, how'd you learn that? Right. If we don't have an explanation in this lifetime, then it's considering something else. And lots of times I'll do a, a past life by just imagining a story. And it's mm -hmm. because imagination comes from someplace. And so I do a lot of what I call a conversation past life, just talking like this. And all of a sudden, the person, by the way the technique, they'll step into the experience. But it's like fears. a user. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Fears is a really big one. You know, I. I started on this um, this intuitive path when I was working on an album where I used comic books as a metaphor um, to tell some stories. And like one of them was um, about, you know, I used the Hulk not being able to find inner peace. And he's looking around at all these other heroes who seem to have inner peace. And in writing that, I realized that I freed myself to say the most exaggerated version of my experience and that that was the most cathartic thing i'd ever done in terms of like connecting with it and i realized recently that you know people they bring in fears and challenges from other lives and in this life they'll be activated but maybe their activation is like i saw a rat once and i had a bad experience with it but in another life they died you know, getting locked in a dungeon, eaten by rats. And all it took was the one rat, but they can't fathom how real and visceral that fear that they developed at another time is because, you know, we have this like sort of shame in society where you're like, oh, you think your pain's so bad? Your pain's not so bad. You know, what about the people in, you know, in, in Rwanda who are starving, right? You know, like comparing each other's pain stops us from fully uh, connecting with and, uh, and and processing the pain that we have inside us, which might have started somewhere down the line that we can't remember right now. You're absolutely right. And sometimes it manifests itself. Like, for instance, if somebody said to me, and I listen to words, and they say words that don't fit, like, you know, they could say they were talking to somebody and their words really wounded them. Well, okay, so where did they learn what a wound was? You know, so you begin to put, it's like playing mind detective and it's fascinating. That's why I don't go to movies much because the, every one of these is a whole story in itself. Right. And so uh, yeah. uh, Angela says, uh, past lives are like spaghetti in a clear dish. They leave a little residue behind. Absolutely, <laughs> Angela. Perfect. <laughs> That's funny. So I'm, I'm imagining, Michael, that um, you, you had mentioned earlier that everything changed when you got you got hit by a car is that right yeah i was uh i believe that i actually had trained for the accident i was obsessed with walking and doing up to 10 miles a day and i was i went down to the university of new hampshire it was a hot summer's day in the 90s and i was crossing a street and not a cow was coming on the street and it's a one way two lane and i got part way out and there was a young lady pulled out of the parking space and then all of a sudden, I see this thing coming right at me and wham, and landed on the hood of the car, broke oh, the wow. back of my head and landed in the street. Spit mm -hmm. up a little blood, so I'm going, well, I must be, you know, this is serious. But I went right inside of myself, like hypnosis, and just trusted that things would work out well. The adventures have been amazing. Uh, the, it broke my leg, severed my tendon ligaments in it, so oh, wow. it made it necessary for me to, and then I put my hand in it. So that uh, within, I got a disability five years later, mm -hmm. got out at a uh, little bit of what I made, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, 40%. But wow. then the adventure has been mind boggling. So I look at the sense of what came about mm -hmm. was a miracle that put it into the point of this, this wonderful uh, that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to experience otherwise. Right, right. Would you say that was, uh, so you weren't like technically 
dead or anything. It was, but would you say it was an end near death experience? Uh, well, I, you know, near death experiences, I believe, come mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. Mm -hmm. It's something where all of a sudden there might be a survival, a thing that changes. You don't necessarily have to go through that tunnel or out, flow it out. Right. But it's a sense of, uh, you know, it's a sense of where things change. Mm -hmm. Concussions now, they're literally, you know, it's a rerouting the thinking process through your brain, right. which is back to, in a hypnosis, we call it a reframe. That's by the neurolinguistics of where you think differently. And the term nowadays, neuroplasticity, they're using that with stroke victims to retrain the brain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm which is what we constantly do. Uh, and uh, Jesse, you're Jesse, right? No, uh, and that's, that's your perfect example of looking at your life and changing and changing. And the example of that is just getting back into the exercise, which is a little goal, which expands it now into something else. And there's two types of thinking, this converging thought process where you keep eliminating the options till you hit the wall. And diverging thought processes where if you're stuck, then you pull back from it and say, well, how about if I go this way or that way? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself way beyond where you were. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, I, I call a resistance in our lives. When things don't work the way we think they should work, maybe they're keeping us from going where we shouldn't be going. You know, there was a great it's thing. Really I cool. wish I remembered the term, but my brother was basically quoting a spiritual book that he had read and, and he had used a term, but he was talking to my girlfriend who recently had got a head injury and it really kind of messed her up for a second. And she's very physical, very athletic, you know, always just moving and, and doing things. And she was brought to a crawl. And I too had had a similar situation. I'm, we're very alike on that level. When I was 30, I woke up one day and I was in excruciating pain all the time. And, um, you know, I had to start to evaluate my body. And my brother said that the other side, the spirit world, you know, that we set up our lives so that eventually we will be forced from our with our outside path into an inside path. We will be made to go inside, to go within and shift gears and shift the way we're looking at everything. Because if we weren't, we never would. We will just keep doing the thing that we do. But something will happen that forces us to go within and get another look at what we're doing and maybe how we can adjust it. And uh, you know what you're saying here really connects with me on that level. Totally. The, the, the saying, God's sense of humor is free will. It means mm -hmm. we can go with it or not. And so if our ego gets all caught up in it and we fight it, then we may just never make that change. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. So, um, so I'm imagining you are, uh, <laughs> you're, of the mind that uh, you can live through ego or you can live through love or you can live through fear these are all the choices that i think that we 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 talk about on this show anyway yeah and and intentions that's the big thing perfection is really your intention not necessarily the result if you intend to do the best you can that's all you know how to do at that time right it's like uh, with the, the Marie Antoinette, whoever said, let them eat cake. Well, cake to her, according to Casey, was a great luxury. It, but it was, you know, taken the wrong way by everybody else. Of course, they didn't understand the intention. Mm -hmm. So I set my intentions each day to, well, I tell people what my, what I do is I'm going to come off of the cosmos. And so whatever the cosmos has planned, I have a concept mm -hmm. of the day but I'm open to being whatever it is and what my next sacred assignment is. And that's the joy of living. And we, the power of now is so important. We forget it because we get worried about the past or the future. Right. And we forget the moment. And, and that's what not having all the senses that people have. For me, it's being in the moment to figure out what I'm doing next. Right, right, totally. And, and, and just being aware that that's where you are. I have to ask you what that noise is. You have like cars going by or like somebody outside with a cake? Am I, is that me or not? I think, I, I'm thinking it's you, hold on, let me see. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought it was a blender. 
when I mute you, it goes off. So I don't know if maybe you've just got some ambient noise happening. It's no well, big deal. You know what? It could be my shoe squeaking against this plastic. So I'll move my foot. So. <laughs> no, there's something that's like a, like a frequency. Someone was saying, I hear, someone was saying, uh, Steve was saying in the comments, I hear a frequency and I can hear it, but we yeah, can hear I, you. We hear you fine. I was just curious. I was just trying to make light well, of it. It's usually our first question because uh, I'm so curious. Michael, you know, I, the the whole idea of this show is that, uh, you know, as, as a kid, especially, I always felt like I was I was kind of all alone. And, um, you know, uh, I wanted to, as we started to put this together, what this was going to be, I decided that it would be really useful to have a place where we were collecting stories of awakening, stories of, of, of unconsciousness to consciousness. And if we can collected enough of those stories, because they're all so unique, as you were saying, that cumulatively we can help a lot of people to not feel so alone and um you've got my interest peaked so so much I, I would love to hear you know what's your story how, how did you go from that unconscious unconsciousness to a conscious a, a conscious unconscious person or a conscious or unconscious conscious person as my brother might say well I grew up, I tell people, I grew up terrorized Baptist, scared the daylights out of me. It was my parents, but it was the preacher pounding on it. And if you if you messed up, that was it. So I grew up with sort of a fear. But when Star Wars came out, I'm thinking of the force. And then, of course, Casey and so forth. But I had a great uncle that was into the metaphysical back as a kid. And he was a professional musician. And I he sent me a photo of before he passed, he lived to be about 90 of me, and it said, made out to me, and he said, the voice of the mind. And I've always wondered what really went on. <laughs> I don't remember, you know, but the passion of this, and again, passion, it could be anger. I had a kid once described me in school as saying, when I was very intense, and it had the expectation of really producing everything, you know, going well. And he said to me, he says, you know, you have different shades of anger. Sometimes you're moderately mad, very mad, but I've never seen you happy. Now, that's like somebody holding the mirror up saying, look at yourself. Well, wow. well, if that's the way other people perceive me, do I like it or not? And I was just getting into studying hypnosis and playing with it at the time. And so I set my intention every day to go to school to react differently than the way it was. And practicing it day by day, I changed. I changed much more than I knew that I was changing, but the whole generation, the next generation of kids saw me differently. And so that's the habit. Intention. Yeah. Intention. Wow. That's a great story. That, that is a prime motivator right there. Somebody and kind of pointed out that I was kind of angry. And I was like, I don't like that. <laughs> right. Well, you see, this is if you can see yourself from a different way. And another thing was that when I taught school, I had my kids as my students, well, they couldn't be my students at school. That would be embarrassing to them, you know. So I had to look at the same time as how would I treat other kids in my house? So it's the balance. It's, I call it the hologram. And you think about this, uh, a hologram meaning you look at a view and you move it a little bit and you see a different view. Well, when our mind works and we think, okay, like for instance, working with athletes or something like this, can you, or can you, can you think of something you enjoy doing? It might be singing, it might be whatever. And can you see a picture of that? And if you can visualize it, can you step back for a moment and imagine watching yourself on the screen? So you're seeing it as if you're watching a movie or something. Or can you also step into it so you can feel it? Now, some people can do one or the other. And, and yes, if you're not visual, then you're not in your eyes. I'm watching your eyes, which is demonstrating to me your kinestheticness because you notice his eyes are down. Mm -hmm. See, a visual person like Michael's very visual. So he puts everything together before he does it because he knows it because he has the ability to, to see the whole picture and to work with it and manipulate it. You are working with your feelings and your emotions. And so when your feelings run the bus, so to speak, then your actions are going to be based on what you feel, which is a form of trance. And sometimes we lose the opportunity to critically think when we're caught up in that. So it becomes a sense of, 
I have oh, learned that the hard way. Yeah. So we pause and we just smell vanilla or do something else, catch that breath, which interrupts what's going on so you can get the different perspective of it. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if it's my other computer making the sound. Let me just. Oh, you know what? Yeah, somebody said it sounds like a fan. It could be a computer fan. Okay, yeah. Let me go. Like if it's well, this game. one's this one's making hum, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, we can still hear you. I, okay. I, I just, okay. Well, I apologize for that. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. I, I just, I'm really resonating with what you're saying, and I feel like I want to actually add to that a little bit, which is the the Please. idea that you went to school each day with a new intention, and it wasn't only. I think it wasn't only that you went to school with a new intention. It was also that you noticed the changes that happened because of that. So, you know, I told a story on, um, I tell a story, I think I told it on this, this show uh, all the time about asking the, just the, the most simple interaction you have with somebody. Hey man, how's it going? And then the response to that and how indicative it is of the energy that that person has and what's going on. And, you know, I, I just realized most of the time you're hearing, eh, I'm hanging in there and, eh, you know, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And I would realize that when somebody would say, I'm doing awesome, it felt amazing to me. I was like, wow, that's great. And so I started intentionally. Yeah, I started intentionally answering that question with that answer. Well, and I and noticed a change. Right. And what I'll do is when I observe somebody, I want to see something that impresses me about how they look so i can say wow hey i like your hair you know or something so i'm starting out with something positive right, right. which also is helping them get in a better mindset in case they weren't you know yeah i yep. haven't been able to into it to um institute it yet but i keep being reminded and i i want to so badly like I, but i always kind of forget that in conversation with people instead of saying ever i know so often, you know, especially when you learn a lot of stuff, people will tell you something and you do know. So like to say like, oh, I know, like I, I know what you're talking about. And instead of saying that, I was like one day I said, I want to start saying, you know what I love about that? You know what I love about that? And and really, you know, like because that's what you want people to right. feel. You're indicating, you know, but and you're yeah, saying I know it's, it's something you I love what you're saying, right. because the reason like if I don't like what you're talking about, I go quiet, you know, like, like, I don't like small talk. I like deep conversation. And so, so often I, I, I feel like I'm accidentally misrepresenting myself uh, because I get excited and I like, you know, if I like you, I want to talk to you and to yeah. say like, oh, I know, and jump into something that I'll say, sometimes people will misinterpret it as right. me not listening to what they're saying. When I'm a builder, you know, if you that's, give that's me- That's a great observation, if, yeah. Yeah, if you give me a little piece of wood, I'll take that piece of wood and I'll make a boat out of it. You know, so, like if I, if I like it, so I want to be able to tell them, I love what you're saying and here's more, you know? So if you want to, the, the suggestion that I would have would be each morning, when you're thinking of gratitude, set your intention that today you're going to feel really good by saying what your your phrase is to them. So you set your intention up that that's what's going to happen. And even you might catch yourself what will happen, first of all, is as you get used to that, you might find yourself with the word almost out, and then you'll pivot and then come back with the other. And then after you've consciously thought of this for a while, then it's absorbed into the unconscious mind and becomes an automatic action. Exactly. Totally. So we have a, uh, a new viewer. I think, Michael, this is a friend of yours because uh, James Davis. Hello, James, says he never ceased to amaze James me. James Davis Great. is uh, actually my brother-in-law in Virginia. Awesome. Hello, James yeah. Davis in Virginia. Thank you for watching the live stream of consciousness. And Michael, thank you for bringing your your uh, people who are interested in you to the conversation. So, and And by the way, I can, as you can see, I can put the, the comments up. So if anyone's got something, mm -hmm. a question for Michael or something or something inspiring to say, go ahead and say it. I try to keep up with the comments before I looked at the comments and it erased my mind for a second. So well, they can tell me I'm full of baloney. You know, whatever <laughs> whatever I only know I have a little prayer that I say, thank you for allowing me to know what I need to know at the time I need to know it. So I don't need to know too much or too little. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. But I think I think that's saying too much. 
<laughs> like you, could, you don't need to say all of that, right? No, I'm just, I'm just teasing you, Michael. That's great. No, Michael, you're, you are amazing. And, and again, like I said, just talking to you is like, you know, we're all about, I think, communication and connection here on the live stream. Yeah. Like, you know, a collective, you know, acting as a collective instead of acting as, you know. This direct, is amazing. You know. This is an amazing conversation. Yeah. This is an amazing experience. And in my mind, you see. I'm not amazing, but my second head has some amazing things. I don't own what goes through me. So I just, mm -hmm. I can enjoy it without having to feel, you know, ego wise. It's just. I think that's, yeah, I think that's what I love about it too, because our guests are so eclectic and interesting and have, bring such a, like Jesse was saying, that everybody brings such a, a unique perspective to this show. And I mean, even our viewers all have unique perspectives and they chime in with the, with the coolest stuff. You know, um, we have some people who've got, you know, some, some psychic gifts and mm -hmm. some, some witches and all sorts of uh, oh, yeah. cool people out there. Um, so yeah, excellent. Um, I, you know, it's coming up on about an hour, Jesse, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've got anything uh, peaked in your head that you want to ask Michael or anybody, uh, Angela is giving you an endorsement. She's saying you're a wonderful author. Your writing speaks volumes. I, I agree. That's that's what Drew. Thank you, Angela. Yeah. I have to say, Taylor, so I Michael is speaking my language. I I am going to try, Michael, and take all the wonderful wisdom that you are sharing just by being you with me, because I believe you and I are actually very alike, and uh, my. Uh, my uh, enthusiasm and my passion tends to sometimes uh, confuse people about me. Um, but, you know, I, I love people and I really love to get the most out of my interactions with people. And uh, I've gotten so much from this conversation with you here today. It was really, I'm like getting like choked up because I'm on freaking pain meds. And, uh, and Angela very sweetly wrote, Jesse is a great listener in the comments. And I like I have this perception of myself that people don't know that about me that they think that I'm not listening you know and I'm oh, somebody who I listen to, to like everything like I'm like always like trying to get the most out of every interaction with any other human that I can and when I make mistakes you know I I just go internally and I just go why why did I do this why did I set myself up for this experience what am I supposed to learn and I'm always trying to learn from anybody I interact with and any experience that I have, um, you know, especially if it's not the most pleasant experience. But and, if um, you're doing the best you can, whatever you say, if your intention is for positiveness, the person owns it. You don't own it anymore. It's left you. Right. And so they can do with it whenever they want to. That's wonderful. I, I say that all the time to my children. As long as you know that you have set out to do the best that you can, how can you be upset with yourself? That, so you have a new kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How four. many kids? Four. You have four. Four? Okay. No, now you got five. So <laughs> step yourself out of yourself over to the side and talk to yourself the same way you do the kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that Michael, is great. Michael was one of the first people who, who told, told me told me that. Something to the effect of at the time, he said that not only are we supposed to love ourselves like we love everybody else, we're supposed to love ourselves the way we love a child. And when he said that to me, it kind of broke me because I realized that I was giving my permission, I was giving myself permission to love myself about this much. <laughs> And when he said I was supposed to do it as much as I loved my kids, I was just like, I don't love myself close to that much. <laughs> and well, I say you should, you should try to see yourself in the mirror. You should see it should be as if you're gazing at your own child. Yeah. But this is that thing of like, you know, holding yourself to some unreasonable standard. You know, I'm scared of rats. You know, does it matter that you had a, a little experience that made you feel that way? Or do you have to be told that you were in, in ancient Egypt and you got buried in a coffin filled with rat. You know, like, it's not, you don't have to have the perfect excuse to feel pain. You don't have to have the perfect excuse to love you the way I have that excuse to love my children because they're my children and, you know, they, they just can't do any wrong for me. You know, even if they are failing and fucking up left and right, it doesn't matter. I love them 
that purely. And and we are supposed to love ourselves that purely. And we are so supposed where does to that love not, where does that love for them come from? It's free, man. It's free and it's infinite. And I'm supposed to have it too. It comes, so, it comes from you. That's what I that's don't, I have a little saying that I use. It's called I'm love, I'm love, I'm love, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. I am your love, I am your love, I am your love. Your is that center of the cosmos. So that if I know that I'm reflecting love through me, I don't think about loving myself. I just set my attention, do the best I can. So I, it's not a consideration for me as to how much or not I like myself. Because I used to talk to myself pretty negative. When I was, right. Now it's like patience, knowing that if I set my attention, do the best I can. Right. That's all I can do at that moment. Right. That you know that clicks me into another piece that's that's been there and i've mentioned this on the on the show before you know my mother and i uh always um like i know now because of deep shamanic spiritual experiences working with mother ayahuasca that her and i are very intertwined that we've lived lives where we were you know boyfriend girlfriend and, and we were you know very major components in each other's lives and this time she's my mom and i'm her child and when we're at odds, it it throws me for a loop. I just I can't stand it. it. It makes me so upset. And you know, the way that she would speak to me when she got upset used to really set me off because I'm a little more timid in my approach. Even though sometimes when I'm interacting with her, I'll be strong and I'll give a lot of strong emotions because that's what she gives to me. But I kept being guided to essentially kind of take the high road and not not allow myself to get mad at her when she was kind of not treating me nicely. And there was a time a little while ago now where she was really not treating me particularly fairly, I didn't feel, but I just kind of kept showing up going, I love you, you know, I'm not doing this to hurt you, I'm sorry that, you know, that it's not going well. And at a certain point, the pendulum swung back the other way and she came to me and for the first time she said something to me, that she had never really said to me before. She said, I'm so sorry how I've been acting, but I wanted to help you more. But because of the circumstances and various things, I wasn't feeling like I could help you. And because I wasn't feeling like I could help you, I was getting upset. And I realized like literally every time she had ever been upset with me, it came from this place of her trying to love me and feeling like either I wasn't receiving love or that she couldn't bring me or get me to where she hoped that she might, being my mother, being somebody who loved me. And it brought me back to this this final thing that she used to tell me all the time. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say anything. And it's so true. You know, you, when you say, I am your love, you know, a lot of times that love gets distorted and, and, it, and it can come back at you in a lot of ways that you don't recognize it because it isn't exactly the way you love. But if people are feeding you energy, even when it's bad energy, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is just a distortion of love. Because if they didn't care, they wouldn't say anything. Did you ever read Gabo, Gab, Gabron's uh, The Prophet? Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel like I've read a little bit, uh, not the whole not the whole book or anything, but I've like watched some YouTube videos breaking down. Yeah. So, so great it, love where, I mean, it's the example of where love almost turns into hate. In other words, it's the it's when we get so intense on an emotion or trying to show it, it can we can flip the emotion within itself. Uh, and the other thing is that when I'm in situations where people are acting and I, I want to, you know, like they're mad or whatever, I want to step back and say, did I cause this or what's really going on with the person? Mm -hmm. And chances are you're, you know, you're finding that what it was was what she was trying to do not what you were doing it was her effort that wasn't working right totally yeah yeah no the 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 that's the exact thing you know i i remember being upset when somebody i, I think essentially they were accusing me of um being an egotist on some level and it was really bothering me because like essentially in my life like that was the main thing that i never wanted to be and I, I didn't I didn't want it to be about me. And I was constantly trying to adjust how I behaved for other people 
try to make people, more, the people around me more comfortable because as a really empathic person, I kind of felt like I had to experience the way other people felt all the time. And I was trying to, you know, basically when I was younger, I was trying to control the way they were feeling so that I didn't have to feel badly with them. But mm -hmm. invariably, I was feeling bad about people misinterpreting my intentions and not understanding me. And I became an egotist in the reverse fashion where I was in my own mind and, and worrying about all of these kind of like superficial things and being in my own ego, but as like a, woe is me, wah, 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 which is not the egotism that we usually think of when somebody says you're an egotist, but it is the same energy, just flipped back the other way. So and, you know, think, yeah. think of how you've changed, what you've learned about yourself over the time, and that now that you're applying in your life, to have it fit in a way that's, you know, it's more positive. And also what you're doing for yourself is really translating to create even a better, more wonderful, powerful energy that you're using with other people. Positive. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, I mean, that's really what we talk about here all the time is just how everything you do is an energy exchange. And just, you know, at some point for me and, and probably for you too, you become, a, when you become aware of it, you're able to just kind of like like we were saying intentionally direct yeah. it the way you want and then eventually it just becomes who you are you're not even you don't even have to have that intention anymore because you are that intention yeah you it's know. like this conversation will go right out of my head because mm -hmm. it's in the moment i don't own it i don't my ego hasn't got to wander around thinking about it one way or the other it's just doing it. And I do music the same way. My intention is I don't know how I play it, but I'm going to do the best I can. Right. I got to, I got to take a listen to some of your music. So we I, learn, I just want to say that the, the rock, but we learn so we can forget, you know, like you, you spend all those hours learning the things so that you can do it intuitively. And, and as this is in connection to what I say to my children about if you're doing your best, you know, you've, Put all this effort into i want to be a good person i want to i want to be a benefit to, to the conversation i want to be positive i want to think of other people you know once you do that you don't have to do it every time you don't have to grill yourself on how you're entering a conversation you know if you know that you've set the right intentions for your life for the way you live for the way you try to treat people it's okay to let down your guard and just go into the world innocently living in the now and I think what a, what a unique idea. That's really good. I like that. That's, that's <laughs> <not>. <laughs> he, he does that occasionally. So, so um, you know, I just want to uh, give a little bit of a not a shout out, but um, I guess one of the things I know about this show, which I'm really proud of, is that uh, our viewers, our loyal viewers, a lot of the time start to follow the people that are our guests so like i know christopher allen has a lot of people who mm -hmm. follow him now um so uh just some of the people who you've brought um well, i just wanted to give you this little sh you a little shout out to let anyone who is one of our viewers know michael also does hypnosis on zoom nice i was about to say yeah. that myself Good uh, job. yeah yeah and uh and james davis says uh michael can see what you were thinking before you think it Believe me, and I think that's kind of evident with the. Uh, He's done a great read of me, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, um, so yeah, I mean, Michael, you you have been amazing. Um, I, I hope that some of our people visit you and some of your people. They're always out. welcome. Yeah, I was going to say I'm on uh, on Facebook. They can find me if they want, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's great. And if they've got a send me a note on michaelathway.com or whatever and uh I, you know we're all in this together i and love that that's my one of my favorite things the whole thing i mean you know i learn every you're you've been my teachers tonight and i'm very grateful for that oh, likewise likewise the left wing and the right wing are on the same bird that's right yeah and if you're up. ever up in new hampshire we have some pretty good uh little hiking tra we're actually ski area too oh yeah uh so, have you ever heard uh, backcountry alliance is a non-profit where they they find the trail these are the guys that like to climb the mountain and ski down no lifts no anything. right right Fresh and powder. so we have four trails on the mountain that they've put in uh over the last few years that uh, 
in the in the winter time we got people packed in the parking lot full and everybody's having wow. a good time and that's that's the joy of sharing that's the great joy awesome what a generous offer and thank you michael truly i, I know both i speak for both of us saying we, we would love to have you on the show again in the future to um, have a lovely in the thank now you. conversation <laughs> totally. thank you so uh, i also i just want to address this uh janet this comment from janet uh one of our viewers when we were talking before about how you should see yourself as the way you look at your child, you should see yourself the same way. That's how I feel about my kids and my grandkids. I never thought about loving myself that way. I love the show and the guest. Uh, I never thought about it either. We Michael love you, Janet. In head. <laughs> Michael's in. That's, 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 this show is based on me and Michael getting together learning you know, and once a week and having very deep, meaningful conversations with each other going, oh, I love chatting with you. I love chatting with you. You know, it's so great that I have somebody that I can talk to on this level about these kind of things that mean the most to me, mean the most to us. And so thank you guys for being a part of the conversation and being so supportive of all our guests. That really means a lot to me. Totally. When we hear back from our guests that you guys have gone out of your way to support them because they came and they gave us their time and their energy and a little piece of their soul. And put yeah, them out we love them. you guys. We love you guys. It so, Mike, just hang out a minute after the uh, outro yeah. and uh, okay. we'll talk. And uh, yeah. we'll, have you, we'll have you on again. Right? And uh, thank you. Next week, I won't be less swollen. Uh, but yes. thank you once again for joining us with Michael Hathaway on another fabulous edition of the Live Stream of Consciousness. Peace. Peace.